create a responsive and dynamic hero image and a navigation bar. Start off with a div with a class called hero container. Inside of that div, we want to create one more div with the class called hero image. We wanna tell our browser the role of this div, and this is going to be for an image. Now we want to include an area label element, and this is simply going to contain some alternative text for screen readers. Next, we want to create a div with the class called hero text, and here is where we're going to put all the text that is going to be on top of our hero image. And first we wanna specify an H1 element. Then I'm going to include an H3 element that says simplify web design and development. And lastly, underneath all of this, I'm going to include one more div with the height equal to 500 rem, just so we can scroll up and down our page. Now I wanna start typing out some basic styles. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my body element. I'm going to set our margin to zero so it takes up our entire page. And then I'm going to select our font family as Arial. Now what I want to do is target our HTML element and what I want to do here is target our font size and this is going to be useful later on in today's video. Now I want to target our hero container class and I want to change the position equal to relative. Then I want to change the color of our text simply to white. So now I want to target my hero image class and what I want to start off is by adding a background image. And to add a background image you want to specify URL parentheses, and then quotation marks. And then you want to navigate to where your image is. In our case, it's within our images folder, and that is the name of our image here. And we want this image to take up 100% of our viewport height. So we're gonna specify that with our viewport height equal to 100. Now I want this background to simply cover. So what I'm gonna do is change our background size to cover. And then I want our image to be responsive from the center. So what I'm gonna do is specify our background position equal to center. And we want it to take up 100% of our viewport width. So we're simply going to specify that with our width equal to 100%. And lastly, we want to change our display to block just so we can get rid of any extra padding or margin that our image will add at the bottom. So now once I save here, you're going to notice that our image is successfully displaying on our background here, and it's taking up 100% of our view width and view height here. And it is completely responsive. Now, if you scroll down, you're gonna notice that our text is down here below at the bottom because we haven't done anything to our text yet. So that's going to be our next step by targeting hero text. And we want our text to display right in the center of our hero image. So to do that, we wanna specify top 50%, left, 50% transform this with our translate method. And we want to insert two values, negative 50% and negative 50%. And what this is going to do is it's going to center all of our text right in the middle, align all of this to the center within its container. So I'm going to change my text align to center like so. And now you guys can see we have our hero image and our text displaying over our hero image. Now I simply wanna add some more styles specifying our font size and our margins, targeting our H1 and H3 elements. And for our font size, we're going to be using rems so we can actually responsively change the size of our text. And now what we wanna do is go back to our HTML and start creating our responsive and dynamic navigation bar by starting off with our header element and then including a nav element within that. We want to set the role of our nav bar here to navigation for screen readers. Then what we want to do is set up a div here and then we want to set up an H3 inside of that and here is where you want to put your logo if you have one or you can put business text. Now what we want to do is add one more div 
And inside of this, we are actually going to start creating our navigation links, home and shop for the purpose of today's video, but you guys can add as many as you want. And for each one of these divs, we want to set up a class equal to nav child. Now, if we say that, you guys are gonna notice that we do have our navigation elements up here, but now we need to actually start styling these elements. So first, what we wanna do is target our header element and we want to make our width equal to 100%. And we wanna change our position to fixed because we want this to stay at the top of our website. If you don't want it to stay at the top of your website, you can simply change this to absolute. Change our Z index to one because we want this to display over all our content on our website. And we wanna change the color of everything simply to white. Let's target our nav element and we wanna change our display to flex, justify the content within our navigation. So what we want to do is we want them to be spaced apart evenly. So we're going to specify space between just like so. Now if we save this, you guys are going to notice that our navigation is successfully displaying over our hero image and they are spaced apart evenly. Now we need to target our nav child class like so. And what we want to do here is create another flex box inside of our flex box that we already created because this is going to let us center and align our elements within its container. Align our items to center. All of our items in our navigation are centered along the Y axis. And something I forgot to do here was actually specifying that these are going to be links. If you wanna to link to another page on your website, here's where you would do that. And now we need to target everything within our nav children. So what we wanna do is specify nav child, and then we want to select our H3 element and then we want to select our nav child again, specify our anchor elements to add a margin of one rem showing space between our elements. Target our nav child again. And in this case, we are going to remove our text decoration. And this is going to get rid of that underline. And we want to change our link color here to white again. And I forgot to specify our anchor element here. And we'll go ahead and hit save again. And now our links are successfully white. Go back to our HTML page, link to Font Awesome. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to paste the Font Awesome CDN right here and make sure this is above your CSS file so you can actually edit the styles from Font Awesome. But if you guys need access to that Font Awesome CDN, or don't know where to get it, I will leave a link in the description. Add one of these icons right here where my links are located because we are going to turn it on and off based on our view width. And in our case, we want to use these simple FA bars. And then for accessibility purposes, we wanna add a title that says button to open navigation. If we go ahead and save that, you guys are gonna see that it now successfully displays target our nav child class again. And now we're going to target our I element and we're going to change our font size equal to two rem margin of one rem. Our icon looks a lot cleaner. Now we wanna start adding a media query, which is going to trigger the code within it based on whatever condition that we set. So we're gonna specify our max width here. And so this is going to say that anything below our specified pixels here is going to trigger the code within our brackets. So anything under 767 pixels, the code within here is going to trigger. So what we wanna do is target our nav child, and then we want to get rid of our anchor elements if our width is under 767 pixels. So to do that, we're simply going to specify display, change that to none, and change the size of our viewport width. You're gonna notice that our anchor elements successfully disappear like so, and that's exactly what we want. But now when our viewport is too big, you're gonna notice that 
our icon is displaying. So we need to set up one more media query and we're gonna change this to minimum width. And minimum width specifies that anything above this width is going to trigger the code within our brackets here. So simply we want to get rid of this icon. So we're gonna specify nav child I and change that display to none there. And now you guys are gonna notice that if we change the width of our viewport here, it's successfully going to trigger exactly what we want. So once we get past our hero image here, it, you cannot see our navigation because there's no background color. So what we wanna do is actually change our navigation height to a different size. So we're gonna change that to six rem here. Create a shrink nav class here. Obviously this is not linked to our HTML page yet, but we will link it using JavaScript. And we wanna change our background color to white, and we wanna change our height to automatic, which is automatically going to calculate our height based on the height of the elements within our container. And then we also want to create a box shadow at the bottom of our header once we scroll down. And since our background color up here is now white, we need to change the color of our elements to something else and we're going to change it to black here. And now if you refresh your page, you're gonna notice nothing happens. So what we need to do is go back to our HTML page, go to the bottom right before the closing, body element and specify a script element. And obviously I recommend that you do this in a completely separate file, but in our case, we're just going to add it in our HTML page to save time. So now we want to grab our navigation bar by declaring a nav variable with our const keyword and make that equal to document.query selector. And in our case, we want to select our nav element like so. And then within this, we wanna start creating our JavaScript functions. And now we want to create what's called an event listener. And all this is going to do is it's going to listen for a specific event. And in our case here, we're going to add this directly to our window. And we want to specify when we want our function to happen. And it's going to happen on scroll. And now we need to specify our callback function. We wanna start with an if statement and if our window dot scroll why because if we scroll up and down is greater than 50 and you guys can change this to whatever you want we want to target our nav element access the class list of our nav element by typing in class list and then we want to add a class to our list add shrink nav else in our if statement and we simply want to copy our code here but now instead of adding we want to remove this class so now if we save it's going to add if we scroll down but if we scroll up it's going to remove that. Notice our box shadow as well. But you guys can see that it's real jumpy and real snappy transition property on our nav element to specify all our elements here. And then we want to change our time to 400 milliseconds because that's how long we want this animation to take ease in and ease out. And now if we go ahead and hit save, you're going to notice that our animation eases in and eases out. And now we wanna create the overlay because when we click on this, absolutely nothing happens. Create one more div with the class called overlay. Create one more div with the class called icon container. And then here is where we are going to include our font awesome icon. And the font awesome icon that we're going to use here is actually the FA times, which is going to be a little X. Now we want to specify our title that says button to close navigation for screen reader. Create one more with a class called overlay text. Include our links here for our overlay. I meant to make this overlay class an ID. And now we want to target our overlay ID. We want to change our display to none position to fixed width to 100% and our height to 100%. And then our background color, we want it to be black, but we want you to be able to see through it a little bit. So we're using our RGB value. Z index to ensure that this displays over everything else. So we're going to specify this as two. Overlay text class here, and we wanna change our position 
to absolute and then our top to 50% our left to 50% transform here and we want to translate this minus 50% and then minus 50% again. We want to align all of our text in the center. Anchor elements within our overlay text class by specifying overlay text and our anchor element. Display equal to block, color white, font weight to something a little heavier, 600. Then get rid of that annoying underline effect on our links. Add some padding to our elements equal to one rem. Add our transition property again for once we start adding animations. Target our X icon here. So we're gonna specify FA time, font size to three rem, color to white, padding of one rem. Function called on, and this is going to turn on our overlay. Get our overlay element. So we're gonna specify a turn on variable, and we're going to make that equal to document dot get element by ID, and we're going to grab our overlay add a class to our turn on variable here by specifying our class list dot add again and in our case we're going to add a fade in class like so but we have not created that yet turn on our display our style dot display equal to block by one more variable and name this overflow and what this is going to do is it's going to keep us from scrolling up and down when our overlay is showing on our page our query selector here and we're going to grab our body element and we want to specify our overflow variable followed by style and the style we want to change is overflow. And so in our case, we are going to make this equal to hidden. Grab our function, copy it, and paste it down below and change on to off. Change our variable here to turn off. And then we want to change these two down below to turn off as well. And now what we want to do is instead of adding this class, we want to remove our class and then instead of displaying block, we want to display none of this. And then this, we want to simply remove hidden and that will get rid of our hidden style. To this FA bars here, we're going to add a on click attribute and we're going to make that equal to our on function that we just created. Now we wanna copy and paste this and to our X element, we want to add this as well, but we want to turn off our overlay. So we're gonna go find our element and change this to our off function. Move our overlay up one here. So what we're gonna do is put that right below our header element here. And now instead of having this X on the left, it would make more sense to have it on the right. So what we wanna do is specify our icon container class, align our text to the right. You guys will notice that our X is over here on the right side. And now we wanna make our overlay text just a little bit bigger. So we're actually going to change this to two rem, crease our padding a little bit. So we're gonna make this 0.4 rem just to clean it up a little bit. And now you guys can see that our overlay navigation looks much, much better. By elements, when we hover on them, we want to change our cursor to a pointer. Cursor changes to a pointer anchor elements and change their hover to when the cursor hovers on them, it turns into a pointer. Create an animation using our keyframes. So to do that, we wanna specify our at sign, type in keyframes, name our animation fade in. And at 0% of this, what we want to do, our opacity needs to be set to 0%. And then at 100%, opacity to be set to 100%. Earlier in the video, we already added these fade in classes here, but for our off function, we don't need to have it. So as you guys can see here, we are adding our fade in class, but we haven't actually created that class yet. So over here in our CSS, we need to create that class 
and then we need to specify our animation and we need to change how long we want this animation to take place. Specify our animation here and we want it to take 200 milliseconds. Ease in and out is when we click on our elements, it will successfully fade in. Create one more animation using our keyframes and this is going to be our rotate animation. And at 0% our transform property and our rotation to be at 0 degrees. Then we want to copy this again to 100% and we also want to change this to 90 degrees so it will rotate as such. Now what we want to do here is select our FA times again which is going to be that X and what we want to do is we want this animation to have happen when you hover. So what we're going to do is specify our animation of rotate, change this to 200 milliseconds and ease in and out and select our navigation overlay. You're gonna notice that when you hover over the X, it does successfully turn and all the functionality still works as it should. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us today through the comments or go to our website at kalmanwebdesign.com. I hope this video helped out a lot. Thanks for watching.